Father, we just come before your holy throne. We ask that you forgive us of all sins we have committed against you and against those made in your image. Father, I ask right now according to your word in Psalm 34, verse 7, which says the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Father, I ask right now that you can be your angels around all of us here in this broadcast, around our loved ones, family members, ministry partners, in-laws, ex-in-laws, and friends, to protect us and keep us safe from any form of retaliation or attacks of the devil and his demons. And we declare Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. All right, friends, this is the right way to start the day. It's just by confessing the blessings of the Almighty upon our lives, okay? That's exactly what I'm talking about. You want to change the course of your day? Even if you wake up sad, you wake, you wake up worried about things, you wake up with pain throughout your body, you want to change the course of your day? Just start praising the Lord in the morning. The moment you wake up, you start praising the Lord. Thank Him. Sing songs of praise to Him. And your day, the course of your day, will be rearranged by the Almighty God. Amen? This is faith. This is faith in God. Faith in the Almighty God. I don't care what the devil is trying to say out there, friends. All right, put your confidence in the in the Lord. I love that portion of the scriptures from Proverbs chapter 3. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Today is what? Tuesday? Today, let me show you my, I got this yesterday. Cool, huh? Does it look like me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I like it. 
I like it. Amen. Now, friends, listen. Uh, today's Tuesday. We run two campaigns. Anointing for business campaign. Well, let me say something to you, okay? Here, we believe like children. Here, we believe things like children. You've got to have childlike faith. Otherwise, you will not see God. Okay, here we try to be like children. We try to believe things like children. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. On Tuesdays, we have a campaign called Anointing for Business. Okay, I'm telling you, friends, I already prayed for business people before. It, I mean, not so much business people, but businesses. I remember I went to San Jose once to pray for a lady. She was losing her business. Things were falling apart. They were losing money. They had no more clients. That was like a four years ago. Her sister asked me to go there because I was in San Jose one week. Uh, and then I was right there. So she asked me to go and, and, and visit her sister's business. Well, I'm the wrong guy to go into a place. Because if I go there and I see satanic altars in that place, I'm going to point that out. I'm not like lukewarm preachers that ignore those things. I point them out. I went there to talk to that lady and then I got in her office. She was pretty sad. They had no clients, not even one. She sold like a, you know, like a Home Depot type stuff, you know, to a construction companies. Of course, her business was much smaller than a Home Depot, but, you know, she, she kind of a compete with Home Depot really good because her prices were, were lower. She didn't have too much of an overhead. She could keep her prices lower, so a lot of people used to buy from her, but then things start turning around. She started losing money. She started losing clients. And then her sister asked, Brother Carlos, to go there. Well, Brother Carlos is not the right guy to go into a place because whatever he sees there that belongs to Satan, he is going to point that out. I told her sister, is your sister a Christian? Oh, no, she, you know, she tries to, but, you know, she's too much into the world. I said, okay, that's a bad thing right there already. Satan has control over her life, over her business, over her money, over her present and over her future if she doesn't change her thinking process but i said you know i have nothing to lose let me go there i love exposing demons i'm going to ex expose her demons right to her face let's go so i went there she was in her office sad no clients no phone calls nothing i said what's wrong with your business she said well we are losing everything we used to have so many clients, you know, uh, they used to come, we used to sell, we were growing. And then myself and my partner here, I said, oh, you have a partner? She said, yes, I do. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about him. Is he here? No, she, he's not. He's taking the day off. I said, tell me a little bit about him. Well, he's a married guy, but, you know, so, you know, I think, you know, he, he's out there in the world doing things too. I said, okay, I'm not going to condemn them, anybody here. I just want to look for demonic ground. So I said, can I take a walk in your, in your building here before we go any further? She said, of course. Where should I start? She said, let's go to the shop. We went down there. Well, guess what I saw there, friends? On every single wall, naked women. Posters of naked women all around the, the, the shop. So the workers there, which were only men, were working there, fantasizing, you know, having probably sex with those women on the, on the walls. Well, guess what? That turned out to be a satanic altar. Brother Carlos, can you explain that a little bit? Because you're saying about satanic altars. Well, when you post, when you, when you place a naked women a poster of a naked woman or naked women in your room in your living room in your place of work you are consecrating that place to satan therefore that place automatically has become satanic altar what is a satanic altar satanic altar is a place of worship 
Now you have all your employees working here and worshiping the devil because the devil now is all around them. And on top of that, they are all full of demons themselves. They all have their share of demons and curses. What kind of environment is this one? I told the lady right to her face. Her party wasn't there. She said, well, I'm sorry, you know, but I, I, I don't own this place just myself. I said, okay, so you are in partnership with the devil. That's what you're telling me right now. You are partnering with the devil, right? She said, oh, I guess so. I myself, I don't have anything here that uh, suggests, you know, that I am a devil worshiper. I said, okay, let's keep walking around. So I kept walking around and then I didn't see anything anymore. <coughs> Those pictures were the only things that I probably saw there, if I remember well. There might be another little thing here or there, you know, but those were major. Do you, you see how stupid people are, friends? Do you see how stupid people are on this planet? Why they go broke, why they get sick, why they get diseased, why they get cancer and die prematurely. Do you see how stupid people are? Can you see that? That's what I'm talking about. These people are blind. And they think they are on top of the game. They think they know everything. Oh, I remember another thing. They used to drink beers there, uh, 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 you know, uh, like after work. They used to, you know, celebrate, you know, the, the, the day and, 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 you know, and then, you know, drink alcohol there and blah, blah, blah. Do you see the kind of stuff? No wonder the business can go wrong. The lady there also on her, not inside the building, but her lifestyle was pretty bad too. I said, okay, I'm not here to change anything. I'm going to just say something to you. If God is not in your business, then you are at the devil's mercy. As simple as that. Let me repeat that once again. I told the lady, if God is not in your business, then you are at the devil's mercy all day long. She said, what do you want me to do? I said, I'll tell you what is the right thing to do, and you think about it. I said, those posters of naked women have to be out of that place. They have to, you have to burn them, and you guys need to forgive. Ask God to forgive you. He has to do that too. Otherwise, it's not going to help you. She said, oh, I will do my best. I'm, I'm going to talk to him. I know he wants to do everything in his power to get the business going again. I said, okay, it's in your hands. Okay? As long as you guys keep worshiping the devil here, that's what you're going to have. You're going to go broke. Well, I remember saying those things back in the days. I don't remember all the details about it, but this part I remember. Then I prayed for the lady because she was down. She said she repented. She said, I made her renounce the stuff. Oh, I'm telling you. I mean, I don't force people to renounce. I said, do you really want your life to take off and things to go well? She said, yes. Okay, you got you to gotta follow me on this one. But if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. Then I explained to her what, what, what I was going to, going to do. Just to make a long story short, you know, not too long from that day, I never went back there. I never talked to this lady again. Not too far from that day, their business began prospering again. Customers began coming back. They started selling again. Okay, don't ask me, you know, because I never went there back. I just heard from her sister. She said, oh, their business is picking up again. I said, oh, really? She said, yes. I said, tell, tell me about your, your sister. She said, well, uh, one thing I'll tell you right now, Carlos, brother Carlos, uh, her, her business is picking up again, but I don't think she has changed much. She probably has changed inside her building place, but in her house, she's still going, you know, uh, 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 you know, worshiping the devil at full blast. 
And then one day her sister asked me to go to her house, her sister's house. I went there. Her sister wanted to sell the house. Now listen to this. Real estate people, listen to this. Okay? I have a word here for real estate people that can't sell houses. Or even homeowners that can't sell theirs. She, this lady, I, I, I think it was like a year or two later. Uh, th th this is a word for business people. Okay? You're business people. You listen to me now. Okay? So about a year or two later, maybe about a year later, after her business began picking up again, well, her sister, that, that, I mean, this, this lady that invited me, I knew her from some deliverance meetings back in the days. So she knew me. She knew I was into deliverance. She actually came to a couple of my meetings, you know, so, and then she was doing really well, you know, seeking deliverance herself. The, but she wanted her sister to also do well. She said, Brother Carlos, can you come to my sister's house? Let's pray there. She is open to it. I said, oh, okay. After her business began picking up, then she began prospering again. So we went down there. Uh, if I remember where well, was a three-story house, big one. Okay, or two-story. I can't remember. But it was a big house in a very expensive area in San Jose, which is called Willow Glen. If you know San Jose, okay, Willow Glen is it, 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 the cherry on top of the ice cream, okay? So it's a little tiny town, like an old town inside San Jose. They kept the name, all, all today is San Jose anyways, but they, they, they kept the name Willow Glen because that's how this, the town, you know, was born. That they, they call it Willow Glen. Well, this lady has this big house in Willow Glen, which was already very unusual because Willow Glen is not a, a city of big houses, but very expensive. Any 800 square feet home there right now is $2 million, right now, in today's market. Well, four years ago, three years ago, it was um, a little less, about maybe about a million uh, or a million and a half. I, I don't remember. But this lady wanted to sell her house for like a million and a half, and nobody was showing at her door. Then she dropped the price, I think was to a million dollars. Even that, nobody wanted to purchase it. I found that to be very strange. A house like that in Willow Glen, people are not even making offers. And she already dropped the price quite a bit. Huh, something is not right. Let me go there. So I went there. And then, of course, the same old things. I asked question, and then, you know, she told me, yeah. She was fornicating there almost every day, having parties there almost every day, drinking heavily there almost every day. I said, okay. Before, your business was the, the, an altar of Satan. Now you turn your house into a satanic altar too. She said, oh, really? Have I done that? Of course you have. Yeah, but I want to sell this house. You know, I, I can't handle this house. I'm sad here. I feel depressed. But nobody's making offers. I said, you're going to sell your house. But you got to get the devils out of it that are hindering you from selling this house because these demons right now want you kidding yourself. She said, oh, I've been thinking about that. I said, okay, I know that. I know. I can look in your eyes and I can tell you every single devil you have. Suicide is one of them. And then I, I made her you know, renounce the stuff again. I said, okay, your business is doing better now. Huh? See, that's the power of God. See, you have to stop worshiping the devil. Well, just to make a long story short, after that, she sold her house. The, somebody went there and made a good offer. If I remember well, I think the guy paid cash for it. Didn't even finance. If I remember well, there was something there about cash uh, whether he put like a half down or it was a big shank of money, maybe even the whole house. I can't remember. Okay, friends? But she sold the house after that. Supposedly, she wanted to sell her house and buy something smaller to be happier. Some people think that way. Oh, if I buy a smaller house, then I'll be happy. Or others say, oh, if I sell my little tiny house and I buy a big one, then I'll be happy. No, you will not be happy. 
because her happiness has nothing to do with the size of a house. Your happiness, I mean, your unhappiness, let me put it this way, your unhappiness has nothing to do with the size of the house, with how much money you make. Your unhappiness has to do with bowing down to Satan and worshiping him and turning your house into a satanic altar. Am I offending your demons already? Some people are feeling offended right now. Yeah. Who do you think you are? If I can walk inside the house, friends, you better not invite me to go into your house. You better not do it because Brother Carlos here does not fear the devil. Okay? Whatever I see in your house that is that belongs to the devil, I will point that out. I went to a huge mansion here in Fresno. These people, this couple, this man owns uh, gas stations all over town. He, they invited me to his house, to their house. His wife actually did. The husband took the day off that day. They asked me to go there. When I got there, I said, oh my God, is this a house or a football stadium? <laughs> that thing was huge, I'm telling you. It looks like a football stadium, that house. Huge. <laughs> Everything shining in the house. I said, wow. I better take my shoes off right now. I don't remember if I put that little miracle powder in my shoes, but I better take it off right now, even if I forgot to put the miracle powder in there. <laughs> I better not even attempt to even touch this carpet with my dirty feet, or that dirty shoes. So I said, okay, I better take my shoes off. And I did it. The carpet was a white one. How in the world somebody will put a white carpet in a house? Amen? It will show any little thing. You spill a little bit of coffee there. Oh my, I'm telling you. That little stain over there will show for years to come. I mean, no, no, you know, they, they, of course they do carpet cleaning there. Oh, no question about it. I said, where do I start in this football stadium here? Where do, you, where do you want me to start? Friends, listen. You know, sometimes people, I know how people think. I used to think this way 20 years, 15 years ago. You know, in front of poor people, you are bold. In front of rich people, wealthy people, then you're going to, well, I'm going to have to think twice about what I'm going to say here. You know, these people are wealthy. You know, I don't want to offend them. I just don't want to offend them at all. I want them to become my friends. Well, that was 15 years ago. I used to think that way. Nope. You can ask me now to go to Trump's house. If I go to Trump's house, he's going to be more angrier than what you see on TV. <laughs> he's probably going to ask his bodyguards to kick me out of the house, literally. Okay, because I point out satanic altars in people's homes. And I point that out in their lives too. Even, I don't even, uh, I can't look in somebody's eyes and I can't tell you whether they have satanic altars. Okay. So I went to this big house in Fresno. And then uh, the guy, they didn't tell me they own gas stations, but uh, I saw it in his shirt, you know, and, and um, I mean, actually he told me because we had a little conversation. And then he told me he owns gas stations and hotels. I said, oh, maybe my next meeting now will be free. You know, so my next uh, hotel meeting might be free from now on, you know. So, but I, I thought of that. Actually, I did. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> you know, I didn't ask for anything. So then I started asking them questions. You know, of course, right off the bat, they told me, you know, in between quotes, I don't want to tell you what their religion is, okay? But right off the bat, in between quotes, they told me that they worship the devil. Not literally, unknowingly. 
How many people worship the devil not even knowing it? Unknowingly, they are worshiping the devil because they are at the wrong place at the wrong time. I told them right off the bat, I said, okay. And then I, my, my, my big finger over here started pointing at stuff in the house. Like, look, that frame over there, that picture over there, or painting, whatever, doesn't belong in your house. Oh, no, no, no. What are you saying? What are you talking about? That's a religious item. It symbolizes our spiritual leader. I said, oh, really? Ooh, tell me about it. All right. I, tell, I told them, you know, unless you guys renounce the devils that you worship, that you follow, I can't do much in your home. And guess what happened? I had to walk out of their home because they did not renounce their false gods. They chose to keep them. I said, there's nothing I can do about it. So long. Bye-bye now. Let me go back home. I mean, before I left, I actually, I exposed demons in both of them. I have my ways of exposing demons. I point my finger in their face and I said, look at me, devil. Now, some people, uh, a lady wrote this morning to me saying that I am hypnotizing people here. She think, I mean, she didn't say that literally, but she, she suggested that. So now I have a word for her, okay? She wrote me this morning to say, well, I have doubts about the way you expose demons. I said, oh, really? Oh, really? And her dad was manifest every single time. She already told me that before too. If I point my finger or if I point to you an anointed cross, anointed all over, I am not hypnotizing you. I am not. What is hypnotism? Hypnotism is you unknowingly, the hypnotists don't know this, but they are actually summoning demons into someone when they hypnotize them. Some of them don't know that. They do it because they went to school and learned that. Every hypnotist summonizes demons whether they know it or not, willingly or unknowingly. They are summoning demons into people Okay, and they do it through hypnotism. How do they do it? They might even get a pen like this, and they say, look at the pen. I'm going to hypnotize you right now. Well, nothing is done in Jesus' name. Nothing is done through the fear of God. Okay, so of course they're going to summon, you know, they're going to bring demons into somebody. No question about it. Anybody can do it. A five-year-old can do it. You don't have to go to uh, uh, take class to learn how to hypnotize people. Anybody can hypnotize anybody if you have that intention. Now, Brother Carlos does not summon demons inside people. I don't invite demons into people. I actually expose what they have now. That is what I do. And I, not, I don't command people. I command demons to look at my anointed cross or at my finger or at my Bible that I don't even know what I left it right now. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. I am exposing demons inside people already. And I can do it the way I want to do it as long as God is being honored, and I am utilizing the authority he gave it to me. No, lady, I am not a hypnotist. I am not. I, you can call me an exorcist. I will accept that. But I am not a hypnotist. I am not. I never summon demons into people. 
I expose demons inside them already. Those that are inside them, you better do your homework. You are listening to the devil now. The devil is trying to use you, okay, to discredit me. But guess what? The devil is not able to do it because I am protected by the living God. And I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Look at my eyes, demons. Look at my eyes, demons. All of you right now, look at my eyes. Am I hypnotizing you, devils? <laughs> Am I hypnotizing you, devils? You liars, deceivers. Liars and deceivers. Liars and deceivers. Look at my eyes. Do you see the Holy Spirit inside my eyes? Yes or no, devils? Of course you do. The Holy Spirit is inside me. Whatever I do, I do with the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. I expose demons. I make public a spectacle of them. Are you listening to me, devils? Liars! Deceivers! Enemies of Christ! You shut up, devils. You shut up, devils. Amen? I'm telling you, friends, I have fun doing this. You better not get that, that crazy guy from CNN, Anderson Cooper, in front of me, because if that guy ever invites me to his show, his demons will manifest publicly on air. That's what it is. Some people rather listen to Anderson Cooper than to Brother Carlos, okay? You have no business listening to Anderson Cooper. That guy knows nothing about the power of God. You have no business listening to him, okay, lady? Okay, lady. You ask that skinny guy to bring Brother Carlos to his show and they, all his audience there, will start vomiting. They will start having nauseous, uh, nausea. They will start having things flat, you know, moving inside their bodies because that's exactly what I do. I don't do hypnotizing demons. I do through the power of the living God. Anderson Cooper and all his audience, they are already demonized. They are all demonized. I don't have to summon even more demons into them because they already have more than enough. What I do, I expose them. That's exactly what I'm talking about, lady. Okay? You better think twice before you get on my face. And you start venting BS. Okay? BS. You heard it well. Okay? Your demons cannot handle me. Okay? I'm just gonna let that you, I'm gonna let you know that right now. Your demons cannot handle me. And I don't have to be in your face to command them to start shaking. Okay? I can do that long distance. You can be in China and I can be in South Africa and I can still Confront your devils, and I don't have to be on the internet. I don't have to be on the phone with you. I don't have to be on Skype with you, okay? I can still make them start shaking and vibrating inside your body just to prove that I am right and you and Anderson Cooper are wrong. Got it? I hope you did. I was going to preach about something here, but I'm not going to do it anymore because I already spoke too much, okay? I'm a little bit different type of guy, friends. Okay? Okay? You better think twice before you get on my face, okay? You better do your homework. You better get to know your word. I mean, the word of God. You better get to know him. That's the way it is. Okay, lady? Got it? Now, lady, look at this. This cross is anointed. This is for you. This cross is anointed. This is for you. Okay? Now your demons are going to manifest inside you right now. Right now. Right now. Manifest devils. Manifest devils. In Jesus' mighty name. Manifest. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. This is anointed right here. Manifest. 
If I put this on the face of Anderson Cooper, uh, you're gonna see his legs start doing this. Oh, you better believe. You better believe. If he ever invite, if he's not that crazy, I'm pretty sure he already did a little uh, 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 homework on me, okay? I'm pretty sure that guy has been doing a homework on deliverance of demons for a while. I'm pretty sure he already came across my videos like many Hollywood celebrities have already. I don't think that Anderson Cooper is too crazy to invite me to his show. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay? Because I will make his demons manifest inside his body. Okay? When I am in front of him. And I, I don't bother taking this with me. Okay? I'm going to take this with me. I'm going to anoint it with more oil. And I'm going to put this on his face. And I'm going to command his demons to manifest. And they will. Okay? That's the way it is. All right? No wonder Hollywood loves me. No wonder I keep turning down shows after shows, TV shows after TV shows. No wonder I keep turning them down, you know, because Hollywood loves me. Okay? Hollywood loves me. I did a show for, for a, 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 a high-profile celebrity, you know, last year. I don't, I don't want to mention which one is because, you know, I, I, I don't feel that comfortable. They caught me off guard. They, they told me one thing and then it turned out to be something else. Okay, but I did my part the way I, I, I always do it. Okay, I just don't want you watching a show, you know, that, uh, you know, so I, I just don't, <laughs> I don't feel, some of you already have watched that one. Okay, no question about it. I will do it all over again. They lied to me. They said I was going to do a house cleansing show. And it turned out there was something else. They caught me off guard. They lied to me. They deceived me. But guess what? I still did my job. And I will do it all over again. Okay? I am who I am. It doesn't matter if I am in front of you, in front of your boss, in front of your governor, in front of your president. I will continue being myself. And whatever I have to say, I will say it. That's the way it is. Okay? Those people from that show, they knew if they have told me the truth, I would not have done that show. I would not have done it. I would have turned it down. But they told me, we need you to do a house cleansing here because a lady needs to sell a house and she's not able to. We need you to do a house cleansing here in her house, but it's going to be on television. It's going to be part of a television show. Do you want to do it? I said, oh, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> what they were not prepared, you know, see... They thought that I was going to be just like one of the psychics that they are accustomed to have on their shows. It turned out that Brother Carlos is not like that. At one point in the show, they offered me, they don't show that on TV because I rejected every single little thing they offered to me. They even brought a, uh, 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 um, how do you call those, uh, oh my God, how can I forget the name of that thing? They even brought an animal there. Um, goat. They even brought a goat to tell me to sacrifice the goat there so the, the house cleans will happen fast. I said, what? He said, he's the goat. And the thing was, meh, meh. The, the real one. And they gave me, they showed me this big knife. Okay, we need to sacrifice this uh, goat here. And, and, he, and he sprinkled the, the, the blood of the goat here in the house so the, 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 the house can be cleansed, right? I said, what? What? Are you crazy, guys? You see, that's how I thought. They were afraid of me. I made them tremble on their feeble legs when they came with this nonsense thing to me. Well, it turned out that they didn't show that on the show because I did not accept. Maybe they thought, oh... Maybe this brother Carlos is just like another guy out there. He probably will accept it and he will do it so we can have fun here, whatever. 
But I don't think they will ever even kill an animal on TV because they can actually go to prison for that. So they probably already expected me that I was not going to do it. But they even offer some other stuff there. You know, some really crazy stuff, you know, like uh, red candles to, for me to light them and go around the house. I said, my friend, you, you called the wrong guy. And, and I, I thought I was doing a house cleansing, a real one. I thought I was doing a one for, for a real uh, uh, ghost hunting show. And it turned out that when I saw that show, it caught me off guard. I said, what? Somebody told me, Brother Carlos, I just saw you on show. I said, really? No, that's not me. No, that's you. I saw on Yahoo Movies. Yahoo Movies. I said, oh my God, I got to see that too. So I went to Yahoo Movies and guess who I saw there on the front page? My big face. You won't be able to see that now, but it happened like it was last year. Or like maybe, I can't remember, maybe two years ago. I, didn't, I just don't remember. Or maybe the beginning of next, last year, I can't remember. I said, wow, that's me. But I never been to that TV show before. Then I start thinking, when did I did this show? I mean, and then I start reading about it. I said, oh, that is the ghost hunting show. They lied to me. They told me I was going to be on a ghost hunting show. And look at that. No problem, friends. Brother Carlos is Brother Carlos no matter what. Even if you invite me to a funny show, I'm still Brother Carlos. I'm still going to show the power of God. You better believe it. Some of you are so curious about it. Just go to Comedy Central. You're going to find me there. Just watch it. Okay? Comedy Central. Can you believe that? I did a show for Comedy Central. I could never ever believe one day I will be there. Well, but they lied to me. They said I was going to be on a ghost hunting show to do a house cleanse. And I said, I'll be happy to because I love exposing satanic altars. And I love doing that on TV. Well, guess what? I went there. Do you want the title of the show too? Uh, it is uh, Nathan for you. Okay, I don't want you watching those ga garbage show from that guy, okay? Those things are dirty shows, okay? They, the only way I went there is because they lied to me. I did not know that guy. I did not know he was a Hollywood celebrity. I had no idea. I don't watch TV shows, okay? Don't watch the other shows that he did. You can watch the one that I did. It's a, it's, it's, uh, I think the show is entitled uh, Ghost Realtor, something like that. Ghost Realtor. Ghost Realtor. I think that's the title of it. Okay, listen, friends. Do not watch any other show from that guy. Just watch the one that I did so you know that I was being a real guy there. Okay, I was being myself and whatever you hear from me there, I will do it all over again. I've done it before. Okay, let me say something to you before you watch that move, that show. Listen, demons have the ability to enter people's sexual organs and change sizes, change stuff there. Okay, I have seen that happening, friends. That's why I am who I am. Okay, if you tell me you have a demon inside your breasts and, and the demons are making them larger than normal, oh yeah, I can go there and confront those devils for you, no question about it, because I know demons do this kind of stuff. If you invite them, they will go in and do that kind of stuff. I know it. It happened to me already in the past. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, friends? Um, you better believe what I'm saying, friends. I'm a real guy, okay? And because I am so real, okay, I don't think that guy from CNN is that stupid to invite me to his show. Because if he does it, he will have his demons manifesting on him and his audience too, and maybe even the cameraman too, okay? I don't care. Let's run our campaigns right now. I'm going to leave you one verse here with you because I had... 
you know, I, I wanted you to read this verse. Read it. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. One more time. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Meditate on this, friends. If the devil is trying to take your life away, friends, listen to this. Look what you should do. This is what you got to do right here. To keep the snares of death away from, your, from you, from your house, from your vehicle. Fear God. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. That's what you got to do. You got to fear God. You got to fear the Lord. Got it? Praise the Lord. Let's run our campaigns here real quick. Let's pray for the anointing for business. Amen? Do you want to succeed in your business? Huh? Got to get rid of the satanic altars, right? And then you got to cast those devils out of your place. The ones that are hindering your customers from getting to you. The ones that are hindering people from paying you. You got to cast their devils out. Well, brother Carlos, but I don't think if I tell them to come to my place, they will. Well, no, you don't have. I didn't say you have to have them in your place. You can be in Texas and they can be in Australia. You can still do it, whether they want it or not. As long as demons begin affecting your life and your business, you have the right to get to them at any given time without notice. Okay? And you don't have to be on the telephone. You don't have to be on the internet. You don't have to be on Skype either. And you don't have to be in the same room either. You can be here in the U.S. They can be in Australia. And if you are the righteousness of God in your business, you can do it. Got it? That's what I'm talking about, friends. Amen? Now, tell Anderson Cooper to invite me to his show. Okay? Tell him to try to make fun of me in his show and tell him to bring his audience there okay you go ahead and tell him that okay amen go ahead and tell him that go ahead and tell him to have a full house you know like an audience there packed i want to see everybody i want to look into their eyes and i want them to look into my eyes okay and i, I don't even have to say a word the moment i look into their eyes their demons are going to start already manifesting on cameras. Okay? Amen? Let's pray right now for the anointing for business. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask right now that you uh, anoint us for business. Those who are running this campaign, anointing for business. Father, anoint us for business. We want to succeed. We want to have knowledge. We want to have understanding in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for anointing us. Thank you, Father, for opening our minds. Thank you, Father, for opening our eyes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. What happened here? Ay, 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 ay. I thought I was broadcasting to YouTube, but I am not. I hope I'm still recording this. All right, friends. I'm broadcasting just to one channel. I, I apologize. I Actually, I started, but it didn't go through, I guess. All right. It's okay. Let's go ahead now and run what's the next campaign right now. The next camp next campaign is uh, we pray over items, right? Is that what we do? Yeah, that's what we do, right? If you have some items there for us to pray over and anoint them for you, just place them before your uh, computer right now. Please, no cursed items, okay? In Jesus' mighty name. Let's go ahead and, and pray right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask for now that you stretch your hands out towards all these items and that you bless them, Father, and break all the curses off of them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Thank you, Father, for anointing them, every single one of them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm going to go real fast right now, friends. I thought I was broadcasting to you too, but I am not. So, okay, I, I really want to go really fast here right now. I lost motivation a little bit after I found this out. I thought I was on YouTube. Okay? So, anyways, let's just go ahead now and uh, pray for, let me see. What's next? Now, I already prayed for two, um, two uh, 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 from one, one anointing, I mean, one campaign, the, the anointing over uh, materials and, and items. No, that one is not a uh, campaign. Let's pray for our loved ones right now, real, real fast. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask right now that you stretch your hands out towards all uh, our, uh, my, uh, our family members. Father, we ask that you bless them, prosper them. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of yours. And we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Bless them, camp your angels around them, place a hedge of protection around them. Father, grant them favor with you, favor with men, favor in the marketplace. Heal the sick, set the captives free, and save those that are not saved. Open the windows of heaven upon them and pour out much blessings. Bless their family members, their descendants, and their spouses. And for the single ones, their future spouse and descendants, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Right? So, um, let's just go ahead and pray for my ministry partners right now, real fast, okay? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask right now that you stretch your hands out towards all my ministry partners. Bless them. Prosper them. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of yours. Father, place a hedge of protection around them. Keep your angels around, around them. Grant them favor with you, favor with men, favor the marketplace. Heal the sick, set the captives free, and save those that are not saved. Open the windows of heaven upon them and pour out much blessings upon them. Pay them back, Father, out of all that they have sown into this mission. Blessings multiplied many times over, whether a hundredfold or a thousandfold or anything in between. Father, bless them, pay them back. Raise, bless them, prosper them. And, and heal their bodies and, 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 and protect them and all that, 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 that belong to them in Jesus' mighty name. We praise you, we honor you, and we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Say, I receive God's blessings for my life. Let's go ahead and pray a final prayer right now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. God bless you now. Have a good day and I'll see you tonight. I'll be more careful tonight about this broadcast. I thought I was broadcasting to YouTube. Uh, just a quick prayer here for our network of leaders. Father, bless our network of leaders for the neighborhood and for the cities in Jesus' mighty name. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Bye now, friends.